Welcome back to the Competitor Talk. This is your host, Kyle Dangler. This podcast is presented by Live Creative Works. And today we're very fortunate to have on the show Lonnie Paxton, who's a three time Super Bowl champion with the New England Patriots. He was a long snapper for them from 2000 to 2008. And then he went over to the Denver Broncos, where he played for them uh, towards the end of his career. And then he kind of wrapped up with uh, officially retiring with the Patriots back in 2017. So we're going to give him a call now and we're going to get going. This is Lonnie. Yep, how are you? It's Kyle from the Competitor Talk. Good, how are you doing? Good, yeah, so we're just going to get started. Welcome to the show, and if you're ready, you know, we'll just get going. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, so, you know, I just wanted to start off with, you know, just talking about your career, and, you know, obviously, you know, just going through, you know, being in the NFL, but I wanted to ask you, you know, where did your, you know, kind of passion for the game lie, you know, as a young kid? I mean, is it something that you got from your father, something that you got from siblings? I mean, what drew you to football? Uh, grown up. In Southern California, um, you know, I'd say the, the locals were really hot and heavy into action sports. And, and, and for me, um, my dad always instilled the, the team sports, um, you know, in my daily routine. So growing up, I played basketball, baseball, uh, a little bit of soccer, and then obviously football. Um, but he had season tickets to the LA Rams. And so he would always take me as a young kid and, and we were kind of that, uh, that early group, you know, he didn't tailgate much when I was with him. So we'd go into the game and, uh, watch kind of all the warm ups and the cheerleaders and the bands and the, you know, just the kind of, uh, pregame theatrics. And, and it just so happened that, that long snappers were, were, uh, were warming up right in front of me. with the oh, yeah. So, uh, it became kind of something that I thought maybe, maybe I could go home and try. Um, and it yeah. was it was something that I thought was was pretty amazing that he could just throw strikes like that through his legs. Now going through that, you know, you just mentioned you know seeing the guys you know snap the ball as long snappers, but you know growing up as a kid, you know I'm sure you were one of the more outstanding you know linemen, especially in your town and area. But how did you get in the long snapping? I mean, what, did you bring it up? I mean, you just mentioned uh, it was kind of you know in the back of your mind, but did you ever think that you know you would transition into a full time long snapper? No, like I said, it just was something that I, <clears throat> when I was playing baseball, I could throw really good, and I was always someone who could throw a football really good. Um, you know, randomly, I was actually I was I was a quarterback uh, before I put on a bunch of bunch of weight and started working out when I got into high school and in college. So, um, just being able to throw really good, I applied it between my legs, and it was, it was something I picked up really easy, and I did it to help the team. It wasn't something that I said, "Hey, I'm going to aspire to be a long snapper." I actually played offensive line, and when I was younger. Um, uh, I played, like I said, a little bit of quarterback, and, and I just prided myself on being like a Swiss Army knife. Played a little bit of defense, um, played all positions on the offensive line, and and when they said, "Hey, you know, who can long snap?" I raised my hand, and, and it just kind of progressed into you know getting the scholarship and, and making a career out of it. Awesome. So you know, going through that, you know, you mentioned you played on all positions of the line. So you know, being a center and then being a long snapper, you know, there's different, I'm sure, techniques on how to you know, bring the ball, you know, to the position that you need it to be, especially as a long step, you need more uh, kind of velocity on it. And I'm sure you use both hands, whereas snapping, you know, it's kind of more diligent in the fact that, you know, just, you know, closer range. How did it go for you transitioning, you know, the different feels that you had for long snapping and center? I mean, it's a, it's a completely different technique. So, I mean, as you said, one hand versus two. And, and even when I was younger, um, a lot of guys were using one hand to long snap. And I even remember a couple guys in the league when I got there were still using one hand to snap. And it was pretty amazing that, that they could get the zip on it, that um, a guy snapping with two hands could, um, <clears throat> but completely different, <clears throat> excuse me, completely different role, uh, completely different technique. I mean, uh, you know, the quarterback, you want to kind of make sure it hits them right in the hands and, and be a, a soft catchable ball. Um, and then obviously you gotta you gotta get really ready to, to drive your way through you know a run block or, or set back as a pass blocker um, for for long snapping it's it's really about repetition the follow through um, getting your head you know using your head to drive through your body for for a little bit of uh, velocity and whip on the ball and, and obviously getting your head back and, and kind of falling back into the pocket to to um, you know to block the guys yeah. on the punt rush and and then you know when it's a uh, when it's a short snap, um, you know you're really just absorbing a ton of uh, a ton of pressure from the guys, and, and it happens so quick. Uh, you know, a second, you know, one point two, one point three seconds, and the ball's up in the air. So it's it's a much. All three are very different. Now going through that, you know, being a long snapper, you know, in the NFL, 
was there ever a point in your career, you know, maybe in college, high school, or even in the NFL, when you f- like finally realized that not that you mastered the craft, but you know that that you realized, you know, you had that special gift for it, and then you know the practice that you put in, you know, kind of paid off. Well, <clears throat> you know, it was, um, it, you know, I guess my coaches always felt like I, I was someone who needed a little bit of encouragement because I, I, I honestly never thought I had the tools to make it, so I, I just wanted to go to college. Um, you know, coming out of high school, I didn't even think I was going to get a scholarship. And then all of a sudden, you know, Sac State says, hey, we need you to come up for a visit. And, and you know, I threw some balls on the sideline after a long night out with the guys who hosted me. And <laughs> the coach saw it and said, well, uh, you know, you guys, you, you want to start this year? You know, they were going to gray shirt me starting January. They, they asked me to come in, not even, you know, have a red shirt year and come in and long snap uh, my first year. So, you know, I, I went from thinking – I'm not getting the scholarship and a little bummed that, you know, my local teams like UCLA and USC, San Diego state and, and all these like pac 10 schools, yeah. um, didn't want me. They send you letters, your parents get all excited. And, and then it just, it's kind of just protocol for them to send that stuff. And then you go to, to getting a scholarship and, and becoming a group of guys and, and playing offensive line and, and snapping was secondary. It was, you know, playing football in school. It was, you know, I lived by the mountains, so I was snowboarding all the time, and it was very, it was very like, hey, I don't, I don't even see myself being, ever competing at that level. So let's just work as hard as I can for these four years and and make the most out of it. And then Patriots gave me an opportunity, and I go out and fourth on the depth chart, and you know, I'm, I'm just like, all right, there's two veterans and another rookie here, and <clears throat> you know, like I said, I uh, I was up with the big le- in the big leagues. I'm looking at all these guys, these amazing athletes, and you know, the Chris Slades and Willie McGinnis and and Bledsoe's and Terry Glenn's and all these guys, and you're, and you're like, geez, like, there's definitely not a way I could I could make a roster. And um, you know, I, I I remember pretty distinctly that we had a couple wet practices, and, and I was the guy throwing the strikes, and, and the other one of the guys was a, an injured veteran. One of the guys was trying to play tight end, not even long snap, and then the other rookie was just throwing ducks back there on the on the wet days. And and obviously in New England, you're going to get some wet days. And you know, I remember. Uh, after one of those practices, walking by one of the meeting rooms and, and Charlie Weiss is MF in the offense and cussing out the rookies and Brady and all these guys. And, and, uh, and, and I'm just as uh, ironically, as I kind of walking by, he says, she, you know, that freaking long snapper over there, he, you know, he kind of like says something. He said, yeah. that guy couldn't even play with himself, but he can <laughs> play on this team because he can snap a ball and he found a spot for himself. So I was like, well, I guess they think that I'm all right. And, you know, come, Cut down day. I made the I made the roster, and it was kind of a shock for me. Now going through, you know, obviously after college, you know, having you know go undrafted and then sign with the Patriots. What was the process like for you to, you know, did someone kind of mentor you? Did you have an agent where they told you, you know, you weren't going to be able to, you know, be a lineman in the NFL? You had to transition more into a full time long snapper. And then, you know, were the Patriots a team that called you, or was there a few different teams and you chose the Patriots just because of kind of the camaraderie there? Well, you know. To answer the first question, um, you know, I <clears throat> I had no clue on how to get an agent. Uh, I had I had no idea of, of you know who was going to call me, what the process was. So you know, quite honestly, when when the scouts would come around, there was no cell phones. It was it was an answering machine. It was it was uh, you know coming home from snowboarding, and and you, you get a message from your roommate saying, hey. Uh, your coach called and says, there's going to be a couple scouts down here tomorrow. And then I'd have to make a phone call to my friend who had the one NFL football in town because he was trying to be a snapper uh, from two years back, but was, you know, was, wasn't getting jobs and some old beat up ball would take it down and we'd do our workouts. And, and afterwards it was, you know, kind of the coach would say, Hey, did you, did you show him, you know, did you even tell him you could snap? I said, no, no. So get your ball, go out there and just throw some strikes to this, this kind of my good luck charm. John Osterhout, who was an office lineman trying to get a roster spot as well. And, uh, you know, a couple of guys gave me their cards and said, Hey, you know, do you have an agent? And I said, no, do you know, how, do you know any? <laughs> and, uh, and it turned out that coach, uh, John Volick's son, Billy Volick, who ended up playing 10 or 12 years as a backup quarterback. We were coming out at the same time. He had met Fresno state and myself at Sac state. So we ended up getting the same agent who wasn't even a player's agent. He was a real estate agent who could review contracts. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all these guys are getting signing bonuses and, and whatnot. And, and I got a T-shirt and a plane ticket to come out there to the Patriots. And, you know, it, 
the, the rest is history because you know for me Sac State came along and they were the first ones to offer the first ones I took and, and the Patriots were the first ones to say we like you and, and it's the first one I took I mean at that time there was no camaraderie it was you know Pete Carroll and and, and uh, you know kind of some some years that you know they had all this hype and nothing happened and and then we didn't even have a coach and we traded away our first round pick that year for Belichick who went to the Jets for a day and come here so there was no camaraderie there was no team there was no dynasty there was no anything it was the first person who called and and I took it and it ended up paying off awesome yeah so you know being with the Patriots you know kind of on the come up obviously you know at that time you know period and you know NFL history going through that you know kind of being put into the fire you know so quickly as a rookie and you know going to these Super Bowls and making these playoff runs I mean was that something that intimidated you or is that something you uh, tried to embrace and you know really felt that you owned the situation I mean uh, to, to be quite honest I, there's no way I could say I tried to own the situation I mean I felt like I was a, a kid from some you know smaller town uh, which now is a big town, but at the time I felt like it was a small Southern California town where, uh, you know, I probably wasn't supposed to be there, but I was there. So I'm embracing the moment. I'm not, I'm not sitting here like I'm owning the moment. And, uh, you know, maybe it was just kind of dumb luck where I just, you know, I wasn't really uh, in tune to the magnitude of the Super Bowl, or at least playing in it. Obviously I was a fan of it, but I still sat back on the sidelines sometimes and, and was a fan of the game and, and tried to not get caught up in the situation because of that. So, um, you know, for me, it was uh, it was surreal. It was something where, you know, growing up an L.A. Rams fan, and, um, the, the year 2001 where we, we lost a coach in training camp and Bledsoe gets hurt a couple games in. It's 9-11. Um, we missed the week of, you know, and then come back and play the Jets and <clears throat> Brady comes in and, and, and we get no playoff by week and, and we win, you know, on, on the tuck rule. And then we win a tight game against Pittsburgh and all of a sudden we're in the Super Bowl against the team I grew up loving the Rams. And it's like, holy crap, how the hell can this happen? Um, but you know, when we're running out for that field goal to win the game against the Rams, it was like, I'm, my excitement is about how we're going to celebrate with our family afterwards. It's not like, is it going to go in or not? We've practiced so much that, you know, to me, it was, it, it was money. And, and, and me and Ken Walter and Vinatieri, we worked so hard at our craft that we felt like we were, uh, you know, lights out when you put us in that situation. Awesome. Yeah. So, you know, going through that, you know, obviously, you know, quarterback takes, you know, a lot of reps, you know, every position, you know, has their own routine. What was it like for you, you know, during training camp, during practice, uh, you know, going through, you know, the different, you know, seasons of practice? I mean, were you a guy who took a lot of snaps, uh, you know, throughout the day? I mean, did you take a few and then, you know, before a game, you know, take a few also? And then if you felt good, you know, just roll with it. I mean, how did you prepare to, you know, make sure your snaps were as perfect as they were uh, going into a game and going into each season? I mean, I was probably someone who oversnapped um, okay. early in my career and, you know, two, three hundred a day sometimes. And just, you know, you, you, you take your 10 or 20 to warm up and then you take, you know, 10 or 15 between uh, your next set of, you know, uh, your position work. And then you take some more if you if you if you screwed it up you want to kind of polish it so then you take some more and then then your period might be coming up for punts and now you take some long snaps and then you you know get a little bit of time off and and then you have field goals at the end of practice so now we're taking field goal reps and and you know if if you had a few screw ups you're after practice working with the guy get another 15 20 30 of them and so um and that was four or five days a week sometimes during the season (laughs) and my elbows are really feeling it these days just because of all the recoil on my wrists and, and elbows and shoulders and back and stuff. But, you know, I definitely didn't take the pounding during practice that a lot of offensive linemen or, or linebackers or D linemen do. Um, but we still trained a lot. We still uh, had a ton of repetition. And, it, I mean, it's a really aggressive movement. People sit there and, and say, oh, the kicker and the punter, the snapper, that's all they do. But there's a reason that's all we do. It's because you can't do it yourself. And so we, we sit there and we hone in our craft and we, we aggressively work on it and, and, uh, and probably, you know, neurotically think about how we can improve just a couple minor tweaks in, in that, uh, in that follow through or, or in your footwork or in the way you grip the ball or whatnot. So it's, you know, it's, I remember Lee Johnson, this punter that was in his 17th year, my rookie year, and <clears throat> he had a bad game punt and he went home. He probably kicked two, 300 balls on the game day and he went home and he kicked 15 of them through the, his roof because he was so pissed off yeah. that he had a bad game punt. And so he had to sit there, has, 
you know, 10 holes in his roof and his kids are looking at him like, Dad, what are you doing? <laughs> you know? It's just, it's something that was in our brain as professionally. want to make it, you know, uh, perfect every time. Now, going through, you know, the practicing and, you know, as technology, you know, continue to, you know, become more available and accessible for you guys, were you someone, you know, looking at your snaps and footwork? Did you look at, you know, the ball rotation on your balls? I mean, did you look at, you know, your velocity? Or were you just kind of a guy who, you know, went on the coach's word and your own feel? No, I mean, I mean, every level these days, and even when I came in the league in 2000, was, you know, film review, film review, film review. So it's only gotten more crazy, more crazy this year, but, or these days. But, um, you know, we had an end zone camera, sideline camera, we had a, a camera that was, you know, a handheld camera right next to the, the, the plant foot of the punter. Then we had, you know, a guy focused right on me and my footwork and following through. And then I, you know, in the off days, I'd have a, take one of the video guys out and he'd film me and film my follow through and film the rotation of the ball. And, you know, we got to a point where, you know, we know if my feet were here and the ball was at the same speed that it's going to, you're going to get the laces straight up at 12 o'clock every time. And, you know, if you if you take a little bit off, or he catches it out a little bit further, then the you know the laces are going to be inside his hand, and so it's like you know it became a science. And, and um, there's definitely a ton of review, and um, you know they send you home with tape. You watch tape on your off days, and it's very review driven. Now, now oh, that's awesome. So you know, going through you know the filming, you know, being you know a long snapper, you know, there's not a ton of long snappers on the depth chart, even in training camp. You know, having to go through that, you know, with not, you know, say five different long snappers or, you know, not having a, you know, tight knit group. I mean, were you someone who, you know, reviewed film with the punters and kickers and you kind of all, you know, had a little pact of guys that, you know, helped out each other just because, you know, have, going through that, you know, being at one of the positions that's more of a specialty craft than, you know, having a lot of guys on the depth chart. Was that something that, you know, you guys cherished together and, you know, went through as a uh, unit? Oh, yeah. And even with our special teams coach, I mean, when everyone has, you know, offensive defensive meetings or position meetings, we're with the coach watching, uh, you know, our, our snaps and holds and kicks and punts and kickoffs and, and everything. And, um, you know, it can definitely get very monotonous at times and um, become something that wears on you. But um, there are some things to improve on every day. And, 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 you know, if you've had a good day, it's never good enough. And if you had a bad day, obviously there's room for improvement. So, you know, for us, it was it was we prided ourselves on being that tight knit group, and um, you know, when we're on the field, then you only got other eight other guys worrying. You got to worry about because we're 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 dialed. Awesome. So going through, you know, being a long snapper, obviously, you know, having to realize, you know, when your time's up in New England. I mean, what led you to the Broncos? Us, uh, you know, kind of special teams unit. I mean, it was it was straight. Was it more of a business it, decision, it lifestyle? It was a business decision at that okay. point, just because you know, you know, I mean, we had won some games. Uh, you know, I was in my I think eighth or ninth year, and uh, you know, the, the Patriots were doing what the Patriots do, and that was you know trying to to keep you around for less money because of you know the the organization yeah. and the chance to win more Super Bowls and whatnot. And, you know, for me, it was you know Josh McDaniels was heading to, to Denver and. You know, they had a good budget, and, and I was never going to see that opportunity for New England. So it was um, it was something I had to choose for my family and and in my future. And so, you know, looking back on it, do I wish I'd have made that decision or not made the decision? I mean, you never can tell. I mean, there's, yeah. you know, who knows if, if the Patriots would have won anything or lost anything when I was there. But, you know, I do have a, a good history of, of nine years, you know, 10 off seasons with the, with the boys and and some relationships and memories that, that you can't take from me and, and obviously championship rings in history. Yeah, yeah. So going, you know, ending your career with the Broncos, you know, being released by them, I mean, was that the kind of time you knew that, you know, it was time to hang up the cleats and, you know, move on, you know, in a different aspect of life? Or did you, know, try to give it another shot? I mean, what was the process like for you personally and with your family to, you know, come up with the decision uh, to, you know, hang up and retire? Well, I mean, you know, for me, we had, I think I was my last experience uh, in, a, in a regular, well, in a, in, a, in a real game, not a preseason game, was the Tim Tebow to Demarius Thomas yeah. one play in overtime touchdown. And um, my wife was seven months pregnant, six and a half months pregnant at the time in the stands and going crazy. And everyone's excited. What a beautiful finish that was, you know, some historic finish. And um, uh, 
when the time came, it, uh, a couple days later, she goes into premature labor and she's rushed to the hospital while I'm at practice. And, you know, my mind switches from playing the Patriots, ironically, to going to spend time with my wife who has twins who are trying to come out early. And they gave us a diagnosis of, you know, if, uh, if things go turn for the worse, you know, you might lose the, your first kid, you know, the one who's on the bottom might yeah. come out first. So, so that was like an eye opener for me. And it, and it took my mind off football. And I just, it was something that I just couldn't focus on. And it was, um, you know, for me, it just, it kind of, it turned me off from football. So, you know, fast forward, they, they, they filled my position with a former long snapper, Dave Ben, who played like 18 years or some crazy. Uh, he was a friend of mine, and, and they ended up, you know, getting their ass kicked by the Patriots. <laughs> and, you know, I go into off season, I have a ton of time to, to worry about my family. The kids come out healthy, spending a lot of time with our awesome. newborn yeah. twins, and football just wasn't on my mind. And we get back into off season, and, and uh, they bring in the young snapper, and it was just... You know, I'm sitting there half the day is just, just thinking about the family, not thinking about football. So I ended up getting released, which was a good move for them. <clears throat> and uh, and I go home, I'm like, I'm done. You know, and then first week of the season comes and the Redskins snapper breaks his arm. And so they fly f- five snappers out, and I'm one of them. So I go out to, to Washington to, to work out, and I almost didn't want the job. I was, I was curious. I mean, you know, my mind was in the right spot to even yeah. go for a workout, but I took it. And, uh, you know, they, they chose someone else. I'm walking out of the building. I literally called my friend who, who my relationship with Red Bull and the action sports world um, grew throughout my career. And he became the vice president of marketing for GoPro. And I called him and said, and we'd been talking about, you know, what's GoPro got in team sports? Is there anything? I, I feel like this camera is the future. And I look at all the, you know, point of view and review and coaching techniques you can learn from it. You know, and we are always talking about this stuff just as friends and, and trying to, you know, get cameras in the locker room to guys and whatnot. And, and, uh, and I'm walking out of the building and said, Hey man, I, I just got cut. I don't even think I want to play football anymore. Can you just put me in the position to talk to people at GoPro? And, yeah, I don't want a job. I don't want anything for free. I'm work for it. And, and, uh, and he did, he got me an interview with, with our, you know, five, with our CFO, with Nick Woodman, with Todd Ballard, uh, you know, all of our executives at GoPro. And, and, uh, by, by December I was hired. And ironically enough, the day the, the email came through with my contract for GoPro, the Chargers snapper got hurt, and they called me and said, "Hey, you want wow. you want you want three games to come play with us?" Uh, you know, in, in San Diego, and I and I turned it down because I just saw that you know for me that yeah there was you know a couple hundred grand on the table, but there was longevity in in the tech space and, and in this yeah. company and, and um, what I saw in my future and post career so. Awesome. So now post career, you know, currently right now I'm working with GoPro. I mean, what is your day to day stuff? I mean, I know you're a senior marketing manager, but what do you kind of do for the company? You know, how are you enjoying it so far? Uh, I mean, I've been here seven years now, so it's it's you know I'm one of the one of the old heads in the building, but <laughs> um, you know, it's it's a great company, great brand, great product. Um, it's pretty amazing what what content and um, you know uh, people's communities and channels can do for for just building your own brand and marketing these days and and uh, my day-to-day is pretty i oversee entertainment so entertainment our, our company's broken or our marketing team's broken up into verticals and we got the motorsports ver- vertical uh who handles all our two and four wheel motorsports and then we have adventure vertical which is you know the guys you see wingsuiting off of cliffs and jumping on airplanes and and uh kayaking down 100 foot waterfalls and stuff and then we have a uh, an action vertical, which is um, our snow sports and skiers and snowboarders and, and skateboarders and wake sports, um, and an entertainment where I kind of I kind of deal with professional athletes um, in team sports. So your football, hockey, baseball, yeah. lacrosse guys, but also guys who transitioned from being you know, a professional athlete and now they're in entertainment. So they're they're on TV, they're they're traveling, they're you know. Um, they're musicians, they're actors, whatnot, um, but they're telling their stories through their GoPro and, and, and broadcasting it to their channels on social media. Awesome. Yeah, so, you know, just looking back, you know, going to college for four years, you know, at Sacramento State, was that something that you would advise, you know, all, you know, college football players, you know, make sure, you know, at the end of the day you have your degree for, you know, after, you know, life after football? I mean, 
you know, in today's world, there's so many opportunities um, outside of, you know, what you plan to do. Um, yeah. You know, for me, I went to school in communications and, and now I'm in marketing and, um, you know, I, I got interest in, in other, you know, industries and whatnot. But, you know, at the end of the day, college is important just just for a foundation and, and um, you know, as far as a degree, I, I don't think it's as important as your parents think it is, but, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's definitely ways to, um, to leverage it once you're done with, with, with school. Um, but yeah. for me, my, my biggest thing is, you know, uh, you know, build those relationships, build your network. You know, a lot of times it's who you know, not what you know. You yeah. obviously want a good foundation of what you do know and how to navigate through the real world. But, um, you know, for me, it's <clears throat> my network and my spider web of relationships is just, you know, something that I've, I've pulled upon uh, in my post NFL career. And I'm going to continue to pull upon, you know, in my next career. And so um, for me, it's, it's, it's about being a good person and having a good network and working with good people and, and, you know, not jumping on the first opportunity, but, but working in, you know, in small groups and making the right opportunity. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear. So, you know, I just wanted to, you know, wrap up with, you know, one final question, you know, it's something that we try to ask, you know, all the athletes that come on, you know, just looking back at your career, just a two little two part question, you know, it's opinion question. What is your favorite, you know, memory looking back on football, you know, it could be NFL, college, you know, just as a kid. And then who was your favorite teammate just looking back? You know, uh, my favorite memory was definitely uh, my first Super Bowl and, and, and what we overcame that year and what we were up against um, as, a, as a team, as a nation, as, yeah. a, as a, a community in Boston. And, um, you know, I think that that really set the foundation for my career. And just going through that experience with all of the guys who were on those two and three Super Bowls, um, you know, Brady's and Brewski's and Willie's and, and Lights and um, Steve Neal's and these guys, Kevin Falk. I mean, those those are my family. So mm-hmm. I wouldn't pick out one team. But I would say that, you know, the guys who are really the nucleus of the foundation yeah. of the dynasty you see today, um, all of those guys, I look at those guys as, as idols to me. And, and um, you know, other than my parents and my family who have been, you know, big in my career, I mean, those are some of the guys that, that I will always look up to and, and you know, lead, try to lead by the example they've set on me. Awesome. Yeah, that's great to hear that, you know, you guys are still, you know, a tight-knit group and, you know, have that, you know, connection, you know, that'll last a lifetime. So we just wanted to, you know, thank you for coming on the show. You know, obviously you're uh, very busy, you know, with your, you know, GoPro and your family. Uh, so we just wanted to, you know, say thank you uh, for coming on the show. Uh, I know, you know, just being in the NFL, you know, it was awesome to get to talk to you about some of your experiences, especially with the long snapper. That's definitely a unique position. So we just wanted to, you know, wish you the best of luck in your career uh, going forward and with your family and, you know, hope to talk soon. All right, buddy. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Have a good day. Yep. Talk. Bye. Yes, that was Lonnie Paxton, uh, former long snapper with the New England Patriots and Denver Broncos. Great to talk to him. Uh, three time Super Bowl champion. Just talking about his career, you know, his life after football, you know, just how he knew when to hang up the cleats. Just going forward, you know, in his career with the GoPro company, uh, it's great to hear that he's found a new passion of his. You know, we wish him the best of luck and just. You know, for all the people listening out there, you know, thank you for taking the time to listen to us. Thank you and have a good day.